Today we're talking about Congress working together. Which maybe they should watch some of the public broadcasting they pay for and learn that teamwork is good. Most people's focus right now is on the immediate fact that in three days the government is probably going to shut down again. And sitting there watching CNN feels more and more like being on the roller coaster right before the initial drop. Well, I'm here today because I'm looking a little further down the track and seeing a loop to loop with a hole coming up. What ride is this? Something from the sim theme park of every bored 12 year old? Yes, according to my analytics, the majority of you are old enough to understand that reference. So what is this coming obstacle? How will the shutdown impact the debt ceiling debate that will come later in the year? Oh geez, now that is something you do not want to mess around with. This isn't that far off either, as the current debt ceiling is set to expire on March 1st, also known as just over three weeks from now. Now generally, if there's one thing we can all agree on, it's that middle-aged white men are amazing at raising the roof. But this ceiling is going nowhere fast. Today I want to talk about what the debt ceiling is, what will happen if we don't vote to increase it, and what that vote might look like. We're already seeing people dragging this into the wall funding debate, because really, what's a wall without a ceiling? Lindsey Graham recently suggested that we bring the debt ceiling into the wall debate by saying hopefully we can solve more than one problem. I think the president understands we need to raise the debt ceiling. It comes due in March, so why not just expedite things? Well, what a smart and efficient idea that is. Tying something so important to something that's clearly taking forever. You see, I decided to kill two birds with one stone by tying the government's ability to pay for things to successfully funding everything I want. So that we wouldn't have to go through all the hassle of having to sign two separate documents. I mean, do you know how hard it is to find a pen in this house? If shutting down the government for a record period of time wasn't a nuclear enough option for you, well, this might be. So what is the debt ceiling? The debt limit says borrowing must go no higher than here. The problem? In reality, the spending was already in motion. Workers' salaries, weapons delivered, buildings built, programs underway. If we hit the debt limit, the spending has already happened. But it would just mean the U.S. can't pay some of the bills that are due, including loan payments, leading to default. And that would be dramatic. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. I mean, if your nightmare scenario is paying your bills a little late, you need more creative dreams. Well, it's not that simple, because when America needs money, we don't just call up President Xi and ask him to cut us a check for this great new anti-Chinese missile program we're setting up in South Korea. Instead, our treasury creates new bonds and sells them on a private market. Because of this, the country that owns the most American debt is, well, here's a hint. If they ever call to collect, they trace the call. It's coming from inside the house. Turns out that America owes Americans a ton of money in the form of those government bonds your granddad gave you for Christmas when he clearly didn't get the memo that you wanted an Xbox. So what does that mean? Well, a few things. First and most alarmingly, if America goes out and announces, you know what, we're not going to pay for these loans. Well, then no one's going to want to give you money anymore. I mean, try doing that with your credit cards and within a few months, identity thieves will be telling you you have to get your life together. Faulting on U.S. loans would have dire consequences, changing our nation's good credit rating and sending out a financial wave that could raise mortgage and other rates. When nobody wants to lend you money, you have to pay more to get that money. Also, it closes off access to certain creditors. And let me tell you, your credit score stays with you for life. And when you're a country that's not located on massive oil reserves, well, that lifespan lasts quite some time. This is where another problem kicks in as well, because if you thought it was bad when the government partially shut down and couldn't pay all non-essential employees, well, sorry, but if this happens, we literally have no money. Physicians who rely on Medicare payments to make payroll, seniors who pay rent with Social Security benefits, or soldiers waiting for paychecks would be forced to make do without their money for some time. My family members who said, Stephen, don't go into comedy, work for the government instead. It's a steady paycheck. Who's laughing now? To sum up this part, not raising our debt ceiling would cut off the government from funds, lower our country's credit rating, and stop payment on bonds. 
of which 70% or $15 trillion is owned by American investors, the Federal Reserve, or the US government. Not sounding like a great option right now, right? Especially because it would be the ultimate own goal move. We have never gone over this fiscal cliff before because, turns out, keeping America alive continues to pull well amongst most American voters. Before we move on, I want to emphasize, the debt ceiling doesn't actually control our government's debt. I know, we really nailed the branding on that one. It just determines whether or not we pay for that debt. So again, think of it like a credit card. We already bought the stuff, the question now is, do we pay for it? So this is where things start to get alarming for me, because, well... I'm the king of debt, I'm great with debt. Nobody knows debt better than me, I've made a fortune by using debt. And if things don't work out, I renegotiate the debt. I mean, that's a smart thing, not a stupid thing. And I made a How fortune. How do you renegotiate the debt? Because you go back and you say, hey, guess what? The economy just crashed. I'm going to give you back half. You hear that, domestic investors and federal government? Trump is now only paying half price for your bonds. The president plays pretty fast and loose with government debt, saying that he would use defaulting as a method of renegotiating that debt. I mention this because, well, he seems to not really be as concerned with maintaining the United States credit rating. So let's get back to today where, because the debt ceiling needs to be raised by March 1st, mark your calendars, it could very well soon be a part of the wall leverage. Now, when the debt ceiling does need to be raised, it's going to be a three-way battle but among the Senate, the House of Representatives, and the White House. And it's going to usher in an extremely divisive time in Washington, D.C. Could make the shutdown look like an in insignificant little party. Oh yeah, us economists know how to party. Continuous political debates followed by everyone just wanting it to be over, right? Nope, just me. So how is this negotiation probably going to play out? Generally, I don't do predictions because every time I try to read my tea, it just tells me that life is random and unpredictable. Maybe I should consider using fewer leaves. I can give you what most people seem to think will happen to kind of give you a framework to work all this through though. If it sounds familiar, it is pretty similar to the government shutdown and how it played out. First, House Democrats pass a bill that just says, hey, let's lift the debt ceiling. You know, give us a little more space. Comey keeps bumping his head. Then Trump says, unless that bill to raise the debt ceiling also has wall funding attached, I'm gonna veto it. To which the Senate Republican majority says, eh, the president says he'll veto it if we pass anything, so why bother voting on it? We have more important things to do. Did you know that if I stare at the back of Mitch McConnell's head for three hours without moving, it starts to look like a field of snow? Then investors start freaking out because they're holding all these bonds that could soon be worth less than the paper they're written on. Then House Democrats say to the world, hey, you know there's still this bill here that will raise the debt ceiling without wall funding on it. While Republicans shoot back, we won't sign anything unless it has wall funding. And Americans just kind of sit in the corner thinking, boy is the other side unreasonable. When news agencies try to make sure they have an up to the second pulse on exactly who we blame most. And finally, after all of that, we get to see if Donald Trump folds or learn exactly what happens when America defaults on debt for the first time. Something that would be super intriguing if I were a citizen of any other country. And with that, all I have to say is pay your taxes because it sounds like we could really use the money. Also get that sweet rebate before our government runs out of money. Can't believe I had to say that. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.